Hello and welcome back to the AWS Launchpad here live from reInvent. So we've got another very special session for you here. Uh, and I don't want to spoil the surprise quite yet, but before we get into what that is, I guess we'll all introduce ourselves. So first, hi, I'm Nick Walsh. I'm a technical evangelist here at Amazon Web Services. Uh, and my name is Shyam Viswas. I'm a senior product manager with Amazon Relational Database Service. And I'm Matt Fitzgerald, uh, head of uh, developer relations for Asia Pacific, China, Japan. Awesome. So we hinted at it a little bit. Uh, uh -huh. You're on the uh, RDS, Relational Database Service team. Yeah. What is it that we're talking about today? Yeah, and, and we're not just talking about something. We're, <laughs> we're launching something. Yeah, sorry, right, I undersold right it. We're, we're launching something. Okay, what <laughs> exactly. are we launching right here and now? What are we launching? <laughs> really excited. Really excited to introduce uh, the preview of Amazon RDS Proxy. Uh, it's a fully managed, highly available database proxy for relational databases on RDS. And it's available for RDS MySQL and Aurora MySQL today. You can give it a try. And uh, support for Postgres engines, that's RDS Postgres and Aurora Postgres is coming soon. OK, so I'm a customer. Mm -hmm. Tell me why I need to use this. Oh, yeah, so there are three key benefits. Uh, the first one is that you can use uh, RDS proxy to build more scalable applications. And it allows you to do that by pooling and sharing database connections. So you can have a bunch of application connections which are pointed at your proxy and serve them with a much smaller set of database connections. So you can do more um, with your database connections and do it more efficiently. Uh, the second benefit is that uh, just conceptually, the proxy sits between your application and database. So all the connections from your applications are to the proxy. So whenever there's a failover, the proxy sustains those connections, persists those connections while the failover happens, and then reconnects to the standby database. So in the process, you are getting more resilient applications. Also, because you are not dealing with DNS endpoints, you are essentially bypassing that, and the proxy is continuously maintaining visibility into you know, what's the health of your database. Um, so it can do those failovers much faster, up to 66% faster in case of uh, RDS multi-AZ and Aurora multi-AZ databases. The third benefit is that you can build more secure applications. It's fully integrated with IAM and Secrets Manager. So all your credentials are stored in Secrets Manager. And you use uh, IAM policies and roles like any other, for accessing any other resource like you do it for the database as well, same way. No need to embed username, password, database credentials in your application code. Yay. Finally, you sold me. Uh, please sign me up. I'll ask how much it costs later. But but first, so you know the three the three main benefits: yeah. ease of use with not having to manage connection pooling, uh -huh. um, the better failover, more reliant failover, and security. Yeah. Uh, what are the use cases that customers are really going to die for this for? Because the first thing that comes to mind to me is like I have a Lambda fan out, and each of those then tries to manage its own independent connection. Correct. Um, you know, how does this play a role in that sort of scenario, and how does that help customers? You touch upon you know the perfect use case, right? So Lambda is uh, you know perfect situation where you would want to have a separate application uh, connection pool. So your Lambda functions talk to the proxy, and the proxy already has a set of connections that are established for you. So you are not going about you know establishing tens or thousands of connections, which like Lambda can easily you know scale up to thousands of requests. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're not stressing out your database with a sudden storm of connections. And at the same time, uh, there's a concept of you know, in connection pooling, right? That's how you share your database connection. So even if an established connection exists, it's not necessary that your applications is uh, continuously pushing through queries to it. So uh, what we are doing very smartly in uh, RDS Proxy is that it identifies whenever there are gaps in your connection when you're not executing queries and then multiplexes or reuses your backend connections to the database for other queries. So this is sort, sort of you know, connecting back to the example I was giving previously, uh, wherein you can have a lot of application connections running on a smaller set of database connections. So you almost have a funnel, think of it that way. Um, not limited to just serverless, right? There are other application platforms you can think of, you know, Ruby, PHP, which don't natively support connection pooling. Or for that matter, even if you have application side connection pools, because this is a central connection pool, it is more efficient and a better in terms of you know, providing other benefits I mentioned, which is faster failover and uh, integration with IAM and Secrets Manager. 
That's awesome. This is really exciting. So yeah. much like caching, where you need to really understand you know, your access patterns and where your data is hot and cold to define a well-architected sort of yeah. configuration for how you, you know, bring things in and out of the cache. Yeah. Uh, for database connection pooling, it's kind of a similar concept, right? Yeah. But with Amazon RDS proxy, this kind of gets dealt with under the hood automatically, right? Yep, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is where I was going too as yep. well. And Nick beat me to it, but it's like, from a reli uh, reliability perspective mm -hmm. um, and resilience, how is this actually going to help me? Because connection pooling is one aspect of, yep. of that. Yeah. So we touched upon it uh, you know, very briefly. So as I was saying, your proxy is sitting between your application and database. So the proxy itself is highly available. It's deployed across multiple availability zones, so it itself is resilient. And suppose there are failovers uh, that are happening in your database layer. Uh, it is holding the connections from your application while the failure happens. And it is talking continuously to your database, so it knows like which one is up, which one is going down, which one is unhealthy, and then makes the decision to switch over uh, much faster than, let's say, if you are talking to a DNS endpoint. So in case of RDS, multi-AZ instance, or an Aurora cluster, you have a cluster endpoint. These are all DNS entries. When a failure happens, we, of course, do this automatically in both the cases I mentioned, but the DNS caches take time to refresh. And during this time, because your application is talking to uh, that DNS endpoint, it doesn't know that a failover happened. So it could take uh, anywhere like you know, 20, 30 seconds just to TNS uh, for the DNS caches to refresh. So we can avoid all that with the proxy. So essentially, developers can just uh, design to be querying this, this RDS data proxy, yeah. and when a database falls over, it doesn't matter that the specific location on a specific server has changed, yep. because ultimately, they're still querying the same endpoint at the RDS proxy. Exactly. Awesome. And you don't even, your application won't even see that there's a failover that happened. There's a latency spike that you'll see, because of course we can't process queries when the failover is happening. So that's a really interesting point. Let's yeah. say your database is failing over. What happens to those requests that hit the proxy in the interim before the new database is spun back up? Or is it so fast that it doesn't matter? Uh, so uh, I'll characterize that in two categories. Right? Okay. There are uh, queries that you have executed which are already on the database server, mm -hmm. which if, let's say, connection got terminated, whatever happened, server died. Uh, so we don't know what happened to that query. So you'll get an error back. But queries which are executed after the failover happens, so the proxy is holding those. Latency increases, but you don't get an abort. And when the uh, standby instance comes up, those queries get uh, paid forward onto the standby. And in terms of um, uh, customer experience, mm -hmm. so obviously we they're using a JDBC driver. Is it yep. simply? we just now update the endpoint for the existing JDBC driver, or is there some additional JDBC driver that has specifics for the proxy? No, no change, like Nothing. if you are used to developing with you know, traditional drivers, JDBC driver, ODBC driver, whatever it is, yeah. uh, you just point your application to the proxy endpoint Got instead it. of the database endpoint. That's as easy as it gets, right? So it's fully compatible with MySQL protocol, today available for MySQL 5.6 and 5.7. Got it. Yep. Cool. Awesome. When I hear about a lot of the value propositions here with the uh, Amazon RDS proxy, it sounds kind of similar to something we launched previous in the year, which was the uh, the RDS uh, data API, serverless data API. Uh, these sound similar, but I know that there are some differences. What are the main right. reasons why someone would use one over the other, or differences functionally between the two? Uh, you bring up a good point. So data API provides, for those who are not familiar, provides an HTTP interface for querying your relational databases. And uh, the key difference here is, uh, first, uh, data API is available for Aurora serverless only, versus RDS proxy is available for Aurora provisioned and RDS MySQL. Mm -hmm. And it will be eventually available for Postgres databases as well. Um, the other reason why you would want to go with data API is, let's say you're a you know, modern uh, application developer, you don't want to deal with drivers, you're more accustomed to you know, talking to HTTP endpoints, that's when you use uh, data API. Versus someone who is familiar with uh, you know, uh, using da database drivers to talk with relational databases. And there are benefits uh, to have persistent connections to your database server. Uh, like you have a long query, or there's a lot of data that's happening, uh, going, or you, know, you are sending queries quite a few times uh, frequently. So in that case, uh, the proxy is a better solution for you. Because really, literally, you don't have to make any application changes. 
Great. Well, I have a lot of questions that involve what this looks like to use, how do I enable it, but I think those are questions that are all better suited to look walking through a demo. Does that sound like something we could do? Absolutely. Uh, so we have it up and running here. There it is. So move on over to the RDS console. On the left-hand nav, you'll see proxies. So already have a couple of proxies created. Let's go on to create another one. And, and again, sorry, just to set the stage a little bit, this is directly in the RDS console uh, within yes. your AWS account, right? Correct. So, And you said you had two proxies there already. How, how long do they typically take to set up? Uh, ten, five to 10 minutes, okay. 10 minutes. Um, and as things go, we'll keep improving upon things, right? <laughs> so hit the RDS console. Go to the left-hand navigation, proxies. This is the new entry you'll see now. Great. Uh, click on that. And this gives you a list of already existing proxies. I'm going to go on and create another one. Let's give it some fancy name. My awesome proxy. There you go. So you see MySQL uh, compatibility here. right? That's, that's what it supports right now. This checkbox is pretty self-explanatory. right? Uh, so if you want to. Uh, talk to the proxy over a secure connection. You turn it on. The next one I want to um, you know, talk about a little bit more. So as I was saying, your applications uh, talk to your database by establishing connections. So in this case, they are talking to the proxy first. And these connections, if you are not using for a certain period, it's probably better that you just get rid of them. Right? So this is the configuration that helps you con uh, control that. So you can say that after 30 minutes of uh, connection being idle, just get rid of it. So that's a setting you, of course, can, you know, a bunch of. Um, and, and that can be super handy in the case of like a Lambda, right? If you know yeah. a Lambda can at maximum time be 15 minutes, yeah. there may be no reason to ever have it set higher than 15, for example, right? Sure, sure. Great. That way, Lambda execution gets done, and the connection, if it's not being used after 15 minutes, it will be terminated. Um, the next piece is target group configuration, and it's essentially our speak of saying like which database you want behind this proxy. So you have a choice of you know MySQL and Aurora databases. Um, for now, I'm going to go with MySQL. Let's talk about the next configuration we have. Again, really quickly, those are databases you've already provisioned inside Correct. of your AWS account, so it Correct. will auto-populate based on the ones that you've already created. That's right. Okay, yeah. these are databases that I already have running. Yep. And so in case of Aurora, it's, it's the entire cluster that you're adding. So all the instances, it can support up to 16 instances on a cluster. All those will sit behind this proxy. Um, so let's go for MySQL for now. The next um, you know, field we have is a connection pool configuration. So what should be the size of your connection pool, and how many connections should the proxy be establishing with your database? And I'll take a concrete example in this case. This is a percentage number, right? So let's let's be uh, clear about that. So what it means is, right now it's set at 100%. Now in your database, you can configure how many maximum connections you want to support, right? It will have a max con uh, configuration. And let's say you have 1,000 connections that you have set up. You can say 100% means you can let this proxy go up to 1,000 connections to the database. You can, of course, set it to 50%, in which case it will only open 500 connections. So this is another benefit where you can control like how many connections are established by each proxy. You can have multiple proxies. right? So you can say, for my reporting workload, mm -hmm. I'm only going to give it uh, maybe 5 or 10% of my connections. So this right? is essentially a way of throttling uh, access to certain parts of your organization by giving multiple proxies without having Precisely. to worry about one team causing your entire database to fail over. Exactly. Or just fall over, yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you have a more even distribution, more controlled distribution of connections. Great. All right, so let's expand this configuration a little bit, right? So now, this is what we are calling a session pinning. And I'm going to go back to the topic of you know connection sharing and connection pools, multiplexing that we are talking about. So um, oftentimes, when you, your applications open connections to the database, they're, they are not continuously using it, so there are gaps. And when the proxy identifies that, hey, this uh, application connection one is not running any queries at this point, mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is the database connection it was associated with, I'm going to take that and give it to another application connection, application connection two, which is executing a query at this point. Um, so the proxy by default multiplexes in that manner. There are certain situations when multiplexing is not safe. 
that would be, let's say you have set up a session variable. You have set a session variable, right? So you want it to persist between multiple transactions or queries. So in that case, we would detect it, and we will not multiplex, we will not share your database connection. For the life of your application connection, it will be associated with the same database connection. Got it. And, and there are ways to architect your application to be more or less compliant with best practices for multiplexing. Right. But ultimately, this is really valuable because mm -hmm. opening and closing a connection has a related overhead to it. So if we yeah. can reuse yeah. open connections and just sort of hand off who's allowed to use them, yeah. it makes everything a little more performant. Correct. Each new connection is more memory, more compute on your database server. And every time you're not going back and creating new connections, it's saving those resources resources that you can use for processing your application queries. Mm. Right? That's, that's what it, it's meant for. So as, uh, as you're setting this thing up, um, and then when we finally have the RDX pro proxy running in mm. our account, uh, what about some metrics? Are we going to get some, some metrics of what's going on on the back end? Yes. So it's integrated with CloudWatch. So you will have metrics like what's the size of the connection pool, how many connections are there, how many of them are multiplexed, all that goodness you will be able to view from CloudWatch. And I guess over time we can feed that back into the. Uh, you can have alarms on it. Yeah. You can, you know, export it out. Do analysis on that. Um, there's also enhanced monitoring that we support. Enhanced logging that we support. So this actually takes the entire SQL query workload, and uh, it exports us out to CloudWatch logs. So you can do that as well. Of course, it hits your performance a little bit. So typically, we recommend using this only uh, when you're debugging. You know, what's going wrong, you want to figure out, you can do that. So as far as getting across the finish line here, we've defined the configuration, we've attached a, a database mm -hmm. uh, to this proxy, yep. and we have some advanced connectivity options here. Yep. Uh, are there any of those that we're going to want to activate here? Yeah, so I was referring to Secrets Manager, right? So here you would see you don't enter your username or password anywhere. Mm -hmm. What you do is you select a secret. In this case, I've already created one. Mm -hmm. And this uh, you know, references a user and password that I've created in my database. Next piece is um, you create an IAM role. This role will give access to RDS proxy to be able to read this uh, secret from Secrets Manager. Finally, IAM authentication. So this is the uh, you know, place where you say whether your client application should be able to use your native MySQL username yeah. password or should it be using just IAM authentication? So if you flip it over to required, it means no one can use just username passwords. They will have to use IAM authentication. Right? So you can pretty much force this down uh, application developers that, hey, no longer storing That's passwords awesome. in your yeah. application. Wonderful. Right. It's great to see that you can uh, enable this security functionality on launch as opposed to launching something that's insecure and then having to yeah. dial back the permissions. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's quite amazing. We are excited about this. Sounds expensive. Uh, it's super cheap, <laughs> is what I would counter. It was so, actually a question uh, we had in chat. There, wa Everyone's wondering, they're like, all right, you've sold me, I'm going <laughs> to enable it on everything. I'm going to spin up a database just to use RDS proxy. How much does it cost? So uh, as of now, the preview is free. It will run free till the end of this year. So use the opportunity, give it a try, figure out how you want to use it. Um, pricing wise, it's uh, and I'm going to reference uh, one region's price, and that's uh, US East, Northern Virginia. There it is, one and a half pennies per hour per vCPU of your database. So the database you enable on, for example, if it is an R5 Lodge, which has two vCPUs, you will be paying three pennies per hour for the proxy. Awesome. Cool. So we, we have to hit the launch button, right? We have we completely finished <laughs> the. All right, let's do that. That's it. And then like Go you said before, yeah. and that's it. In yeah. about 10 that's minutes, it. that's it. Our, yeah. And then and I, I take the endpoint from this, and then I can just plug it into my JDBC configuration? Exactly. So I have the proxy created here already. All you got to do is Go in Sit your in. configuration file, update the connection string, and point it to this endpoint. All right. It's that easy. And yeah. we're done. Yeah, so we're running up against the clock here. But again, thank you for tuning into this very special session here on AWS Launchpad. Again, Chayan Biswas, mm -hmm. uh, Senior Product Manager from Amazon RDS, helping us announce the launch of Amazon RDS Proxy, an exciting new service uh, in the Amazon RDS suite of products. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Stick around. We will be right back with some more awesome content. See you Thanks, soon, everyone. Guys. See you all.